Hi everybody! What you're about to listen to is the second mini-sode compilation of the Chiluminati podcast. These will be episodes 5 through 8 out of 10. If you enjoyed what you listened to and you want to hear the others, the other two can be listened to right now if you head over to patreon.com slash Pod and join the $15 tier and above. A third one should be dropping very, very soon. We here at Chiluminati Podcast want to thank everybody who supported us so far. And with the Patreon success, we've been able to take this podcast from hobby to profession and put all the man hours we possibly can into it. And because of you, we've also began to fill out our team. The first one being a full-time researcher brought onto the team so that we can continually do more regular deep dives into the weirdest, craziest topics we can find. And as the Patreon grows, we'll fill out our little team with an audio engineer and all the little necessary things to bring you the highest quality podcast we can. If you want to check out all the the behind-the-scenes stuff and get those mini-sodes right now, you can go to patreon.com slash Pod. Chipping in a couple bucks can go a long way. Thanks, and enjoy the episodes. And welcome to the Chiluminati Minnesota Minnesota Mini Minnesota Minnesota Chili Chili Mini Minnesota Mini Chili Chill Mini Chill Mini Chill Mini Five I can't remember what we said I can't remember what we said that called Hey Chill Mini I I looked back at the Patreon actually and I have named it something different almost every time It's a mess It's it's a mess But thank you so much for your support as always over on Patreon I'm excited for this Mini Sode because Alex changed his right as we started the recording of episode 46. And Jesse says he's got something cool. I'm so, so excited for, for this. I actually I, brought something. Usually, I am like, everything I read on the internet, I'm like, this is stupid. So I don't ever bring anything because I don't want to, you know, spread BS. But right. I found something that I really want to talk to you guys about. So I'm excited. Okay. Why don't we start then with Alex? Okay. What First of all, what country is your news set in, Jesse? Just so that I'm not stealing your thunder, just in case. Uh, my news isn't news. It's from Reddit, and it was a topic that was posted, and I want to see what your thoughts are on some Perfect. of the responses. Okay, great. All right. So my story initially, I'm just going to touch on it because I know you guys out there are going to be like, what were you really going to tell us before <laughs> yeah, you did the stupid Lincoln Kennedy thing? <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you really quick that there was, uh, you know. Here, no, I'm you sh- know what? Before, before people get mad, this is my topic now. I'm taking it. But yeah. also tell it, tell it, Alex. Yeah, I'm just telling you, like, everybody is feeling a little scared of the outside right now because we're all locked inside our houses, obviously. And, um, you know, unless you're going to work. And so at night, it's kind of scary because things could be happening outside. Like right now in my neighborhood, somebody's like breaking car windows and it's like fucking crazy because we can't do anything about it because we're not supposed to be outside. Right. Right. And so in India, something similar is happening where over the past week, there's been sightings of this creature on roofs and in bins and in, oh, and, and stuff like fucking around and being on roofs and like scaring people and shit like that. And slowly over the week, that story has transformed from a monster into a man. Oh. And they're calling him the Spring Man because they think like that- Jack? Well, yeah, because he can jump onto houses. People are saying he can jump onto houses just like- spring Jack. So he can, like, be standing in the street, and then, bam, he's on the roof of the house. What a talent, um, dude. Yeah, so there hasn't been any photo evidence of it or anything like that, but just to give you an idea of how big of a deal this story is right now, uh, there was actually people who were arrested in India who were, like, in a group roaming around, like, patrolling for this thing because they really believed it was out there because that's how, like, real it is right now. They, yeah. like, defied their quarantine or their self-imposed isolation or whatever the thing is that they weren't supposed to be violating. They just want to sneeze the coronavirus on him, so we'll stop. Well, they just, they were outside at night looking for this thing, <laughs> no, and it's crazy to me. It's wild. No, it's wild. But well, now you got the story. That's, that, now you know. That was from Coast to Coast, so shout outs, shout outs to Coast to Coast website. They got good news articles on there, but that was what that was originally going to be. I'm not going to dive any deeper into that anymore, though, because it was kind of dumb anyway. And now I know that we need to talk about Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy, too. So Hell I pulled yeah, up, we do. I pulled up the classic Snopes article on this coincidence, because we're going to go through the list. This is like 
one of those things that oh used to go God. around in the 90s, in the 80s, like on, on Facebook the internet. all the time. Yeah, like people would like, <laughs> ma- you know, one of those mailers that you pass on. Like people don't do that anymore because we all decided together, like that's fucking annoying. Yeah. But some some sects of old people still do it. But this was this Sex. was one of those. Some sects the. the- <laughs> like some the, sexy old people still do this when no, they're holding it down in older old age, <laughs> oh having God. phone I just sex, and talking about historical I coincidences. Me. I love me a Gmail. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, we love getting emails, but this unfortunately is like one of those things that spread around, and it's problematic to say the least in terms oh, of its, you thought it's, I said its factual accuracy. That's fine. But we'll break it down because it is it is convincing. <laughs> There's a lot of historical evidence to back up the claim, and that's why it's so pervasive, right? So let me let me hit you with a few coincidences between these two great presidents, two very famous American presidents, Abraham Lincoln, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Here we go. Get ready. First one, Abraham Lincoln was elected to Congress. He was a congressman first. He was elected to Congress in 1846. Okay? Okay. Nothing crazy about that on, t- on its own until you realize that John F. Kennedy was elected to Congress before he became president in 1946. 100 years difference. And even that is not that convincing at first until you find out that Abraham Lincoln was elected to be the president in 1860 and that John F. Kennedy was elected president 100 years later to the day, not to the day, 1960. <laughs> but, you know, it's cl- same election day, 100 years apart. Uh, also, it may, rem- it may astound you to find that the, the, the name Lincoln and the name Kennedy each contain seven letters. Wow. wow. Yep. I'm blown away. I, I also want to bring up. Just wait, pre- it gets dumber. I, I also <laughs> want to bring up that both presidents are known for their attention to civil rights. Okay, they're they're famous for like some civil rights related things. Just after uh, we uh, learned, Abraham Lincoln jammed all the Utes in the uh, Utah yeah, Basin. Yeah, a lot of violations of of Native American <laughs> civil rights. Um, both wives lost their children while living in the White House. They both lost a kid uh, while they were sitting as the first lady. Both presidents were shot. Both presidents were shot in the head. Both presidents were shot on Friday. Oh, oh, wow. Uh, Just before the murder, Lincoln's secretary, whose name was Kennedy, warned him not to go to the theater. And Uh. Kennedy's secretary, whose name was Lincoln, warned him not to go Uh. to Dallas. Uh. Oh, shit. Both assassins were from the South. Both Are we sure pres- about that one for Kennedy, though? What? Are we sure oh. about that one on Kennedy? Are according we sure about that story, one for Lincoln? It could have been vampires. That's true. Okay, well. Listen, I according to the established way. narrative before Alex Fasciani of Chiluminati Podcast blows it all out of the water, it is assumed that both of their assassins were Southerners. Both presidents to succeed these people were Southerners. Andrew Johnson... Uh, who succeeded Lincoln, was born in 1808. Andrew Johnson, by the way. And if you know your history, you know that Kennedy was succeeded by Lyndon Johnson, who was born in 1908, 100 years later. Think about that. Wow. Two Johnsons, 100 years apart. You both did, succeeding. Did, like the second two phase Johnsons. of the simulation or something at that point? The two, Yeah, the two assassinated presidents. You think each like they're saying like you th- because like each a, a president was assassinated and kind of lived very similarly in that way and that went up that way each one's like a bookmark to the evolution of the simulation that we yeah had to like face like it's version one point is like yeah. the eighteen hundreds version versus the nineteen right. hundreds version yeah exactly I'm like, yeah I'm living that West World that Hell West yeah. World life also speaking of one hundred years apart we know who John Wilkes Booth is and we know who Lee Harvey Oswald is both of which have three names which are made up of fifteen letters each. Yeah, that's right. They were both born 1839, 1939, 100 years apart. Get your mind blown. Uh, <laughs> just a little bit more for you. I don't want to. I don't want to kill you today on this podcast. I just want to amaze you. So I'm only going to tell you a few more things. Okay. Booth ran from the theater that he shot Lincoln in, and was caught in a nearby warehouse. Okay. And Oswald ran from the warehouse that he shot kennedy in and was caught in a theater and both of them if you know your history before they were able to go to trial both of them were assassinated well damn so think I'm about gonna, that hold on you please continue so think about that so <laughs> so let's break these down okay it seems yeah break it down for at, me at at first this seems like insanely coincidental some of these things especially are like 
you start to do the number 23 in your head. You start to like think something's happening, right? But if you start to think like about like, you know, just like the nature of coincidences and what a coincidence means and what like two people who are in the same uh, like system of government succeeding in the same yearly succession for years and years. Like if, if they had, if they had occurred 92 years apart, 105 years apart, it's like a hundred years only matters because it's a round number, but like, you know, elections happen the same number of years apart from each other all the time. So yeah, it's always yeah. going to be a multiple. Yeah. They're always the, going to be there of those numbers. So even though it is somewhat of a coincidence, like, it's like a one in 20 chance rather than like a, you know, one in a million chance. You know All right. I mean? Also, so I many- just want to say one of the things about this that I love is that it like, I had to look this up just to verify that I was going to hit you with like facts internet. But uh, this all, this thing also is known for taking, like, liberties. So a great example is Alex said, you know, he ran from a theater and was caught in a warehouse and, and that kind of thing. Yep. Technically, maybe a warehouse, but John Wilkes Booth was – he was caught on a tobacco farm. And so yeah, he people – caught in a warehouse on a tobacco farm where as, 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 as uh, Oswald was, like, an employee at a, like – it's right. not even really a warehouse. It's like a right. depository. Gotcha. It's like, I mean, if you've seen it, it's like a tall office building, basically. You know, like it's like you're 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 cheesing it a little bit to make it make right. sense. Right. To make it fit and be more yeah. shocking than it already is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, same thing with the the presidential elections. It's exactly the same thing. 1860, yep. 1960. Yeah, we have elections every four years. Exactly. So. It's like yeah, math. It worked. But also, yeah. more importantly, is election dates and inauguration dates and how long it took to vote. Like the difference between voting in 1860 and voting in 1960 are totally different. Yep. The when presidents are sworn in, like the whole thing was a vastly different machine a hundred years before. So right. Almost, it isn't, well. n- almost yeah. nothing they did resembled each other. Right. At any point. Also, uh, the thing about their names, right? Lincoln and Kennedy each have seven letters, right? Uh, already, like, if you're a skeptical person, you know that that is just pure nonsense in terms of, like, mystical coincidence. Yeah. Because, like, there's a lot of names that have seven letters in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, the thing that's crazy is the average length of presidential surnames is 6.64. So in terms of like coincidences, it's like actually not that far off from averages between all the presidents. Yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. If and anything, like that's things. if anything, that's the coincidence. What about why are there no short name presidents? <laughs> yeah, that is kind of weird. Right. Think about that. Well, why? Is, why not? I wonder. Yeah, Bill yeah. Taft. Taft, <laughs> Taft was Taft was one of the bad ones. That's true. That's you true. know, I wonder if like a longer name automatically in people's Grant mind feels like it's more powerful great. or carries more or carries more like. Uh, authority with it or something well i mean yeah but like okay like lincoln and kennedy both have seven letters right yeah. and that seems amazing but the dude's name is abraham lincoln no middle name that's yep. his f- full name abraham lincoln john uh f kennedy is john fitzgerald kennedy so if you actually look at that full name together yeah it's not the same it doesn't fit can i tell yeah. you it's exactly how i cheese online quizzes you know those quizzes were like type in your name we'll tell you what you're supposed to be i always type in jesse jesse cox and then my full name to see whatever the best answer will be. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's the right one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I also was talking about civil rights, right? Uh, but it's like the article makes a good point, which is like all these things happen, but they're like not related to anything that like the president themselves did. It's like being like, right. w- they're like they're, 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 their own example is like it's like saying – Woodrow Wilson and Franklin Roosevelt were like particularly concerned with wars. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It's like it's, it's so dumb. Sure, but like that's just because the entire planet went to war yeah. during their their presidential term. And arguably uh, arguably Lyndon Johnson did most of the work when it came to civil rights. Right. Yep. Yeah, he was there to close all the deals. Yeah, he like did all yeah, he was the one who signed everything. Yep. Um also the thing about them losing their kids while in the White House all of Lincoln's kids were born before he was the president. And the Lincolns actually lost two kids. Uh, one died when he was four years old of tuberculosis. And then uh, that was in 1850. And then the 11-year-old son was the one who died in the White House of typhoid 
during uh, the end of their first year. So Damn. he like first of all, losing kids in those days is not as is not as like uncommon crazy as it is now to lose yeah. your kid like that. And, it does uh, seem crazy that you could be the leader of the free world. Although, still- although admittedly, 1860s America, we were not anywhere near a leader of anything. Everyone yeah, no, in the we world was like, oh, boy, they're messed up over there. Although I don't think that's changed. But they're like, no, oh. But you know what? Smash cut to B. Johnson going into the ICU for COVID. Like, it's it can happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Uh, but, yeah. So, so Lincoln lost a kid who was 11 years old while he was in the White House who had lived 10 years before that. But, uh, but JFK and uh, Jackie Onassis – uh, she had like a, she had like a premature birth that died two days later. So she, her kid di- did die in the White House. But the the two circumstances, if you actually look at them, one is like losing a kid that you've known for a decade, and the other one is like, you know, almost like you didn't even have the kid yet. Like yeah. the kid came out early, it was not looking good, and it died quickly. Like it was like a much different situation there's nothing mystical about the similarities between the exactly it's just surface level nonsense yeah 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 uh but people eat that people eat it up yeah they love stuff like that yeah yeah yeah, it's it's oh it all it's all connected don't you see yeah Yeah, don't you see jesse look this is how i now you understand how i feel every time we go to every episode (laughs) i'm like how are you falling for this (laughs) also both presidents being shot on a friday is actually like a one in seven Shot. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, it's yeah, not. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's very, very. Everybody thinks it's one in forty nine, but it's like not. It's like one in seven each time. And then uh, the other thing that's crazy is like about Fridays is like you know Friday is like a like a everybody day of events. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Both were shot in the head. Is like everybody who ever tries to kill anyone shoots them in the head. Obviously, but if you think about I was the aiming actual sh- for the shirt. <laughs> but if you actually think about the shots that were taken in both, one was like up against the temple of the president almost. You know, like a guy was in the booth with him and shot him. And the other one was like allegedly a sniping, like a one in a million sniper shot from a window yeah. yards away. So, yes, both presidents were hit with bullets in their heads. But the everything else about it, totally not the same. Not connected. Uh, and then the Lincoln secretary Kennedy warning him not to go to the theater and Kennedy secretary Lincoln warning him not to go to Dallas. Uh, not even actually true. Kennedy oh. had a secretary named Evelyn Lincoln. There's no explanation of whether or not that person ever told him not to go to this like motorcade. Uh, and Lincoln does not have a secretary named Kennedy. There was John Nicolay and John Hay. So, I don't know. Uh, nobody ever. Also, oh yeah, the other thing that's important about this part of the article is like, if you're the president, right? It's I'm, almost I'm like, in the president's seat right now. It's almost like every time you go do anything, somebody tells you that you shouldn't do it because somebody might try and kill you, because you're <laughs> the fucking political leader of like the United States of America, like. There is an element of danger to you appearing in public every time, and that is why there are guards who are with you at all times when you are in public. And for the rest of your life. So the idea that somebody warned you not to go do something before you died as the president is like, it's not act- – it would be weirder if somebody, like, didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Have a good time. Like, look at psychics. Psychics can, yeah. like, be like, something bad is going to happen, and you can, like, believe it because it's like – Well, then, and it, well, especially then if you believe it, you immediately start looking out for it. And so you you start kind of building scenarios where you're going to get into trouble. Well, like psychics can tell you a lot of things that happen, like 15, 20 things. But if one of them happens, you're like, yeah. that psychic was real. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Also, the Southerner thing. They're both killed by Southerners. John Wilkes Booth uh, was actually born in Maryland. Uh, he was definitely like a Southern sympathizer and he like agreed with the philosophy of the South at the time, but he was definitely like born in Maryland. And then Oswald was born in new Orleans. Uh, and he was in Louisiana and Texas. And then he was in New York and then he went in the Marines. But like, it doesn't matter because Oswald, even if you follow like the official story has nothing, he like didn't like the reason he killed Kennedy had nothing to do with like, 
the north or the south where as with booth it's like everything to do with it like it doesn't yeah. like he doesn't see himself as like a southerner in the same way that like in the same way that booth it's does. all it's all like you said it's all just surface level like similarities any any depth any going into it even a little bit you find just like oh it's all a bunch of kind of yeah people don't look beyond it and uh another thing is i also said they're both succeeded by southerners and if you know about the presidency you know that for a long time the second place person became the vice president and and as as like a historical sort of like uh what do you call it? a precedent it's like very common that if you're trying to like get on the good side of the united states of america and you're like affiliated with one political party you're going to bring somebody into your sphere that's like of the other political party to like maintain that sort of like image you know what yeah. i mean yeah like Lincoln was a Northern Republican who was running for reelection uh, in the midst of civil war. And so he put a Southerner on his, uh, who's well, it's, a Democrat. It's, ba it's balancing the ticket. It's the way it yeah. always, yeah, it's always been that way. If you're an old man, you get a young guy to be your vice president. If you're a young yeah. guy, you get an old person. If you're from like New York, you find someone from the deep South. If you're from California, you find someone from the Midwest. It, it's yeah, it's how they've always done it. Got to balance yeah, he, it for the politics. He's like a mid he's like a New Englander, so he got Johnson, who's like yeehaw Texas, and then yeah. yeah, exactly. But that doesn't even hold up because the idea that Andrew Johnson is really a Southerner anyway, he was the only senator from the South who didn't secede. He was like against. He was loyal to the Union yeah. after the secession. So the the fact that they're both Southerners again, it's like it doesn't really mean anything about no, the yeah, people. They, it's meaningless, uh, like, titles. Again, uh, yeah. it, it really impresses Grandma, though. She sees it and is like, ah, don't you see? Coincidences all around us. I mean, if you're just, like, having a cup of coffee and scratching your balls in the morning and reading this, like, yeah, you might, yeah, you're you not going to look into it. the caffeine it. kicks in, be like, oh, that's fucking wild, dude. Yeah. Uh, Johnson is, like, the most common last name that there is. Yeah, of course. So, obviously... Johnson is like very likely to be the name of your successor. It's not like each of their last names was like, you know, Shyamalan, like <laughs> sure some name that you'll you were you remember how to say just because it's so exotic to your ears. Like yeah, you know, Johnson is like the most common name in America both times. Uh, huh? another huh? the 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 birthday thing also. It's like. It's 100 years. It's true, but it's like, you know, the only reason it's significant is because of the number 100. It has nothing to do with anything. It doesn't mean anything about everybody whose birthdays are 100 years apart. Just the fact that they are 100 years apart, it's literally like if they were both 99 years apart, it wouldn't – like why is that not significant but 100 is? You know what I'm saying? The, the human brain likes patterns. Right. Uh, same thing with the birthdays uh, with John Wilkes Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald, 1839 and 1939, except that Booth was actually born in 1838 and not 1839. And nice. so they just, like, fudged it to make it even more, like, sensical. Ridiculous. Uh, the other thing about them is the three names thing. Lee Harvey Oswald was always called Lee Oswald, like, to people that he knew. People mm -hmm. just said his full name afterwards in the... In the uh, in the press because he actually used fake names all the time. And also, you know, you don't know the person. So you just read the whole name that you see Lee Harvey Oswald and huh. John Wilkes Booth actually was usually called Jay Wilkes Booth or John Wilkes because his dad and his brother were both named Junius Wilkes Booth. And they, I think were both actors, all three of, and his brother Edwin was also E Wilkes Booth. I feel like I knew that. Yeah, so he's he's all from actors, and he was a famous actor. Like they were mm -hmm. all actors. Uh, the fifteen letter thing is also weird because none of their same names, like, like uh, if you think about like Lee Harvey Oswald, John Wilkes Booth, like none of the actual names themselves are the same letters. So it seems much more coincident, like just random that it adds up to fifteen in both cases. Yep. And it uh, is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, uh, okay. The thing about the, you were talking about the thing about the theater to the warehouse and the warehouse to the theater, right? Booth shot Lincoln inside of a theater 
and then let and then left and fled state lines like he went far and then got trapped inside of a building where he was killed right all right oswald was in the warehouse textbook suppository you know whatever depository whatever it is he like textbook suppository a suppository is something you put in your butt yeah uh, i was gonna let you roll with it dude <laughs> uh oswald was in the building shooting out at kennedy who was not in the warehouse then he stayed in the same town he was taken alive in a movie theater was not killed there and then like taken out by the cops you know what i mean and it took yeah. like maybe 45 minutes for them to entirely find him. different stories yeah completely uh and then the idea that they were both assassinated before their trials is, like, crazy because, like, this dude saw them and just shot him. While they had him, like, the barn was on fire. He was trapped inside. There were guys with guns outside. And a dude just, like, saw him and shot him. And he was like, I had to. Like, I had to shoot him. Because okay, he didn't want this dude to burn to death inside of a barn. Gotcha. Like you know what I'm saying? Thing? Like he said, he said that he shot him because he thought that he was going to attack. But oh. later he said, I saw him trapped in this barn and I just shot him out of mercy because I wanted him. Yeah. To so it was a mercy killing. Whereas Oswald was legitimately assassinated by like a person who walked up to him during like him being moved from one place to another. Jack Ruby came up, just a private dude, like a normal, uh, you know, regardless of what conspiracy theory you believe, this dude's just like some nightclub owner who like goes up and like caps him just because he's like, fuck you for shooting the president. You know what I mean? Damn. Mm, yeah. Uh, also, Booth was shot a couple times, I think, and lived for like three more hours after they got him out of there. And Oswald died like... I think before he got to the hospital or at the hospital after they rushed him away, you know, like, so nothing about it is the same. Yeah. That's wild though. Like what people will do just to make things feel like they have meaning and purpose and that life isn't just chaos. Yeah. Uh, and I, the reason I like this Snopes article and, and real and real quick, shout outs to David Mickelson or Michelson who wrote this article <clears throat> like in 1999. Uh, but the, he added another item to the list that often ends up on the list. Uh, but he left it off earlier because he thinks that this item kind of just like, you know, makes the whole thing seem more sus. Mm -hmm. But it says a month before Lincoln was assassinated, he was in Monroe, Maryland. And a month before Kennedy was assassinated, he was in Maryland, Monroe. But actually, huh. Marilyn Monroe died a, over a year before Kennedy was killed. Uh, and I'm not even sure if the part about Lincoln being in Maryland is true. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Well, so, so there thanks you go. Snopes for tearing that shit up. Can I, like, really mess with your heads? This is, I'm ready, dude. Uh, this is nothing to do with, like, um, you know, Lincoln or Kennedy, but it takes us down the path because I know Alex, you mentioned Johnson as a last name. Yeah. And it got me thinking, like, oh, what are the main last names? Like, what are the, the biggest last names in each country, right? And so on uh, net cr netcredit.com, I don't know what the actual website is, but I know they have an image, which is most common last name in every country, right? And so I went on to look up what the most famous last names or most common last names are. And what I see is like, as a history nerd, is so fascinating because it is all directly tied to colonialism. So a great example is, the number one name in the United Kingdom is Smith. That's also the number one name in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and America. And North America. Oh, yeah, all right. uh, another great one is in Portugal, it's Silva. In Brazil, it's Da Silva. In wow. uh, Spain, it's Garcia. And then in uh, many of the countries that Spain controlled, it's the number two name, which, which is also, I mean, like, Garcia is in Ecuador and stuff like that, but it's yep. also Gonzalez or mm -hmm. Rodriguez are other ones that are uh, huge, and those are up on the list as well. And it's fascinating to see where people took their names and took control of things over the last several hundred years and how 
it, especially for the British Empire, because it's technically the most recent empire. Right. Um, <clears throat> how it's still lasting with the the big, you know, Australia, New Zealand, North America. It's fascinating. I, that is like I wonder legitimately how deep that goes because it seems like it could be like really a deep rabbit hole to go down. It's like the the ancient history version <laughs> of that weird app that thing that showed that people showed off on Twitter where you can track cell phones and watch how it spreads. Like, well, yeah, and you can see you can see fascinating things that I love. So, for example, is uh, in North Korea and South Korea, Kim is the most used last name, mm. and you're like, okay, I guess that makes sense. Until you see that in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, Kim is also the most used last name. Mm-hmm. So you have to be like, History. so they the name, the last name, that family group moved geographically through North Korea, from South Korea through North Korea, through China, which is where Wang is the most popular, mm-hmm. past all these other places to get into the middle of uh, Eurasia, essentially, and in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan is the number one last name. It's crazy. The number you one can last see, like, name in Uzbekistan is Kim? Is Kim. And That's Kazakhstan wild, is Kim. Like, I, I would not expect that at right? all. Fa- like, it's so fascinating. You can see, like, uh, a great example is based on the way nations used to be. In the middle of Europe, uh, Novakova. I'm saying that wrong probably, but Novakova is Czech Republic. And at the same time in Slovenia, Novak. Is it is it's just a it's derivation the same name with a different accent, yeah. And yeah. in Poland, it's it's Novak, but it's spelled N O W A K. But the W's are V's in Poland. Oh, that's wild. That's yeah. cool. That's, that's that's like cool though. Like it's 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 like you said, it's fascinating. That's like how people always say we're like one in six people are related to Genghis Khan or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. That, that's true, especially in in Asia. Uh, most people who have a little bit of Asian like ancestry are definitely in some way related. Yeah. That's that dude, fucking insane. That dude spread his seed. All right. Uh, Are you ready to get crazy, guys? Can yeah. I take you down to crazy town? Okay. On this Reddit this like week. a whole other episode at this point. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> on, on Reddit this week, we saw a post go up that said, what conspiracy theories do you believe are actually true? Oh, I love threads like this so much. And it was just, hey, people, tell us what you think is actually real. And I went, I, I decided to go from least crazy to full crazy. Okay. Okay. But here's the thing. I didn't want to get like out there. Cause that's the whole point of the show. I just want to keep it like very low key. Not like that aliens are actually controlling the government. Not like that stuff. <laughs> Actual things that are possibly could be real that I would even buy. This is okay? the beauty of Reddit in general right here in a nutshell. Yeah. What you're saying. All right. Our first, I just want to hear what you think. The two of you. Yeah. All right. Theory number one. The hole in your toothpaste is far too big. You don't need that much toothpaste, as you see in the commercials, but it gets you to buy more sooner. The hole, like that, it comes the toothpaste out. that you oh, squeeze you out, waste more. Yeah, that, that it's I, too. It's too big for its actual. You don't need that much toothpaste. They're just trying to get you to buy more toothpaste oh, sooner. I see. I don't know if I believe that because one, I have definitely put too little toothpaste on my toothbrush before and have had not enough and I've needed more, uh, but. Well, I will, I will say this: so many, so many candies are shrinking. So many candies get like a big stamp on them at some point to save like X amount of chocolate, you know, yep. like per bar by like stamping it out of the bar, uh, you know, stuff like that. They're saying I forget what the big famous one was like uh, recently. Cadbury eggs or something were like one third the size they used to be, or something like that. But- uh, someone in this topic said that the toothpaste companies paid a guy. To make their caps like a few millimeters bigger. Bigger than like what they're supposed to be? Yeah, so they squirt out more toothpaste so you have to buy more sooner. I, yeah, so I'm sure that adds up. In, well, you when know, you the, sell something on that scale, like that is what adds up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, no, I, true. I say it's true, verified. I guess, yeah. I guess so. that's, <laughs> you that's convinced believable. Mathis so quickly. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, well, I guess I could see big business doing something like that, and it's stupid. Not my toothpaste. My toothpaste is Italian, and it's, like, impossible to get out of the fucking tube. But (laughs) whenever I'm in a hotel, I'm like, holy shit. (laughs) All right. Theory number two. The Coca-Cola Corporation came out with new Coke in order to change the original formula to to corn syrup from regular sugar without people complaining about the subtle difference. Did that really happen? 
They came back with corn syrup? I feel like that's something you can actually check. That's if it. that's true, that is absolutely why they did it. Coca Cola. Guaranteed corn. that corn syrup is way Because New Coke, really everyone true. hated New Coke. They hated the taste. And then they came back with regular Coke again. They brought regular I'm Coke. I'm gonna make back. a documentary about people telling me so, what New Coke tasted like. They did, they did switch, obviously, but they did over the course of the eighties keep cutting the amount of sugar that was in Coke of it. So it's like it was happening anyway over the course of years, and then eventually they just made the switch. But was the switch like we made new Coke and then they came back and there I mean, was no know. sugar in Coke? Because Why Coke tried to switch to new Coke. To be honest with you, I mean that's that's like one of the most uh, notorious like brand fuck ups of all time. You yeah, can't, you Coke, can't do this, Jesse. You're not even half like you, you're at this. This is number two, two guys. This is Coke number two. Like, Coke was like <laughs> right, Coke tastes different. Now. We got to push forward. What else? What's next? <laughs> okay, yeah. So all right. Well, oh, give me your thoughts. What do you think? True or false? If that if that's if that fact is true, if the fact that they switched is true, there's how does it no ring to in you mind. in your soul? How does it speak to you? True or false? I, true. It, it rings false to me. It rings too too dumb. Okay. Next one. Michael Jordan's two year stint in baseball was actually like because he got a two year NBA ban for gambling on games. Yeah, I've heard this. I buy I've this. Heard this. I heard I buy, his... I buy. I I would buy this as well. I there's read this there's before. like. There's like conspiracies that his dad was killed by because of his gambling yes, debt. Yes, yes, I've read this. Yes, I don't think that part's true. Um, but I don't know. There's a there's a show. There's a podcast called What Really Happened about this exact thing, and I listened to it. And I think there's elements of truth to it, but I think it's I think you know Michael Jordan himself. Like I don't know. The case, I think the door is still open on that one. I think it's yeah. possible. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm definitely with you. It's possible. All right, next one. They intentionally leave out pockets or put incredibly small pockets in all women's clothing so they have to buy purses. True. A hundred percent true. Yeah. I'm a fat it's guy. Like, you know, and I, I wear tighter pants than I want to, and I have a bag because of it. It's definitely I don't know if they do specifically, but it definitely became like a fashion thing. All right, next one. Throwback Thursday was invented. So that social media apps, mainly Facebook, could build and develop facial recognition technology showing people's faces over time. I'd, I'd believe it. This I'd absolutely believe it. This, the amount of times we've caught companies doing sketchy shit to collect info on us, absolutely. But you don't believe the new Coke thing? <laughs> well, no, I, just, I don't know if that did it happen exactly when it needed to happen for that. that to, like, yeah, that I don't know. But I'm telling you, they were like, this is what Coast Coke tastes like now, knowing full well that everybody was going to be like, Ew! Give me the old Coke back, and then they give like a shitty version back, and you're like, "Oh, thank God! It's exactly how it used to be." Yeah, maybe. Man. I mean, maybe, go. I next, have you? When was the last time you had a Mexican Coke? Well, Yo, I don't drink soda. So Mexican Coke is like a different reality, just from normal just, Coke. Yeah, it's true. You out there in listener land, go ch take a bottle of Coke, take a bottle of Mexican Coke, do a taste test between the two of them. You're gonna be like, "I believe." All right, I, I believe you on that. I just don't drink soda. All right, yeah. what else we got? What's next? All right, next up. This one uh, is very short. Stevie Wonder can see. I believe this. 100%. This one, dude, this is the forbidden Chiluminati topic that I can't do. <laughs> but I wanna, I'm going to tell you something about this. There I think this is, is crazy. I think this is genuine. I think he's 100% blind. I think you guys are my crazy. Instinct. Have you seen the videos? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, don't, he's still aware wanna, of his surroundings. I don't want to make a statement about this either way because <laughs> on the one hand, this could be like the worst thing ever, right? But on the other, there's not that many There's not that many people who are blind famous people who there are so many celebrities who are willing to just go out into like – not. I'm not Public. talking about like – the fringe podcast like the Chilmanati podcast. I'm talking about like they're on like like Jimmy Kimmel. They're on yeah. like Conan O'Brien. Like this motherfucker can see. And I'm like, if somebody's putting their like professional yeah. like, I don't believe this at credibility all. on the line in that way, how I I mean, how are we not at least looking into it? But I can't. I cannot do this. This is the I don't, this is how we I, I don't believe this it. This is at how all. you cancel the Chilmanati podcast, and I will not do this. This is how you this is how we're going out. Our last topic is is claiming. No, I will not be a part of that. It's not right. He's definitely blind. You can't. You can't. Right. But <laughs> I will not deny that there is a overwhelming amount of convincing circumstantial evidence. Not to mention 
video footage of him seemingly being able to see things that he shouldn't be able to. Correct. All right. Next one. Mattress firm is a front for folks who yes. launder money. Yes. The amount of them in my town is absurd. There's like three within a mile stretch. Two of them are across the street from each other. I'm not buying it. Just like people aren't regularly buying mattresses is what this isn't guy says. Isn't there uh, something about this? There was a, uh, what was that YouTuber's name? He's famous. Shane? Shane Dawson. Yeah, it was one of his videos, I think, covered this. I need to I need to look into this because I I don't know I think there's a, I think there's a more credible uh, report out there like somebody did like somebody like This American Life or maybe it's like Adamantium Holdings like it's it, a shell company you know I dude the, there was there was a Reddit thread that was like I live in a town where there's 15 of the same store and all their food is expired what's going on <laughs> they all have the same name they're all on the same block and all their food is expired what is this nobody goes in <laughs> oh or out of the store oh my god that's wild Oh, you know what? This is a great topic. I'm going to save the other thing I have for next time, and I'm going to give you a little hint. By the way, I have two, I have three more of these, but I just want to give you a hint. I read a thing on Reddit in that, like, you know, there's, like, a relationship Reddit thing where it's people post the craziest, like, like they're asking the for asshole? help. Yeah. yeah, am I the asshole? Yeah. Well, there was one where a guy was like, I, my wife, my newly married wife and I just moved into a house, and she claimed the entire top floor. And I thought she was joking, but no, she won't let me into the top floor of our new house. And she keeps saying I can't go up there. She has her own private Amazon account and orders things to go upstairs. And I have the smell. It, it smells like dirty linens up there, but I'm not allowed up there. Should I do anything? I don't want to ruin, ruin this relationship and the trust we have with each other. And everyone's like, go up there. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> and he's like, if I go up there, then I'm just breaking her trust. And they're like, she's doing it to you. It's incredible. It is like That's a TV wild. show. And he's commenting on everyone and they're just like just go upstairs just go up, just tell us what's up there <laughs> people are like either she's a cam girl or she's got like dead bodies the theories she's doing like that she's making meth like nobody people gets theories to do are, that in a marriage maybe she's a skinwalker you know who does that the beast from beauty and the beast that's yes. the only person who does that it's so crazy and everyone's like just go up there i need we need it one day hopefully it will resolve itself so i can give you guys an answer but it's crazy anyway okay bless reddit it's beautiful all right three more of these the reason Disney came out with a movie called Frozen is that so when you so that when you Google Disney Frozen, you won't instead get information <laughs> about Walt Disney's head being frozen. That's genius. <laughs> I I think that it, whoever wrote that is a genius. Uh, but I don't. Man, they really had to bank on the movie being an incredible success, though. <laughs> yeah, whoever whoever wrote that that conspiracy theory is a fucking genius. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I that don't I believe, believe it. it. Okay. I definitely do not. High school's true purpose isn't to educate, but to break the youthful hope and spirit we all have for life. I really think its purpose is to beat us down into office drones or trade workers who never pursue dreams outside of uh, the norm. Can I tell you? This is uh, like this is something that I'm like, I work like I see a therapist. Everybody should go through see a therapist. No shame in seeing therapy. That's one of the things I'm literally working through right now is this idea of like. I struggle with the idea of like, I'm supposed to have done like lived like this business life and stuff and all this other nonsense. And you like struggle to break free from that mindset of like where you're supposed to be and where I am now and them not colliding with each other. Can I really twist your, twist your noggin on this? So, oh, please do. uh, as a, as a history nerd, I know for a fact that during the late 19th century, uh, when parts on like, you know, and factory floors, didn't fit or work or were damaged, they were dropped out of the system. So just putting that out there. For those of you who want to get like even more freaked out about being a cog in a machine. Yeah. Yeah. I think the yeah. cog in the machine part is very true. I don't know if like high school was designed to break our spirits. No, I don't think it was designed that but, way. Yeah, but but the, like is there an element of like populate like is there an element of like controlling the masses to high school? A hundred percent. And if you don't think that's true Look at the fucking Pledge of Allegiance and just like watch people, watch a room full of people do that. Yeah. It's weird. All it right. Weird. Our last one. Humans were actually just as, if not more, technologically advanced than we are today. Maybe not with computers, but they did have the potential for mass amounts of power. If you think how far we've come in the last 1,000 years, it's not crazy to think that ancient Egyptians or other civilizations did have technology required to build things like pyramids or other things yep. of that nature. War and struggle for power is what killed off humans that knew these things, and it was only 1,000 years later that we rediscovered them. Uh, first of all, I don't buy it for an instant. 
Um, I have been very deep down these rabbit holes. Uh, the ancient Egyptians being super technology. And there's a lot of stories about Egypt fighting Atlantis and uh, Lemuria, the other hidden land of Lemuria. And these were all hyper technology. Hyper I will technology say, humans. though, this theory, while I don't believe that we had like flying car Egyptians, I will say, though, that, you know, Greeks invented steam engines that were lost to time. There was, uh, the Egyptians had electricity of some form where they had those, those jars that would light up the, the inside and Romans developed concrete. And then we lost that recipe too. Yes. So right. literally concrete that we can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Like literally they did things that we eventually did, but I, I think that because there's logic leaps, people are like, well, they could have done that. Clearly they could have done other things. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah. just, we have forgotten how to do things more simply across the board like um you know just like how at one point in time everybody was like a master of when all foods go bad and how to take care of food because nobody had a fucking refrigerator in their house and now we do you know and it's like well now that i have this refrigerator i don't need to know this like it's still impressive to know that information today like if you're out in the wilderness or some shit or sure. you're in a country and you're trying to you know use like older technology but you know yeah. I mean, I think as much as it's like, I don't think it's like humans had the technology we have today in different forms. Uh, but like, I think that things like Hercules, uh, the movie, the Disney movie, where it's like modern day, but it's like ancient Roman times at the same time. I think yeah. that's like a little bit more accurate than people well, yeah. like give credit for. And if you don't think I'm telling the truth, I was at the Getty uh, Villa and I saw one of the things they have is an ad for a for a coffin maker like it's like a like a billboard <laughs> made of stone from like a stone coffin maker humans uh, it, have always been humans man you know what i mean yeah if you if you really want to get like super tripped up about time and oh, civilization God. and that kind of stuff go to museum uh, i know in la right now we have a few museums that have this going on but i think any museum of of like history where you can go back especially art museums you can go back and look at ancient roman stuff yeah. Ancient Rome is fascinating because to us, ancient Rome is 2,000, 1,500 years ago. It's a long-ass time. And the crazy thing is, to ancient Romans, Egypt was, was 2,000 years yeah. ago. And so to oh. them, what you see is you see a lot of Romans emulating cool things they liked about Egypt, where <laughs> even some people would get bus, <coughs> excuse me, would get bus of themselves made to look like they were ancient Roman or they would decorate their homes to be ancient Roman looking. I'm sorry, uh, ancient Egyptian looking. Uh, and so you would have all these people in Rome pretending to be ancient Egyptian because they thought it looked cool. And so it's, it's interesting, but they had no contact with them. They okay. didn't even know because a thousand years had gone by two thousand years. But and so they, it's mind blowing when you think about it, that to them, they thought about ancient Egypt the way we think about ancient Rome. Yeah. It's super cool, though. And, like, uh, to, to kind of even slightly tamed, uh, like connected to that is, like, ancient Rome, whenever you see old ancient Rome graffiti <laughs> and you read what it translates to, you're like, oh, we've always just been like this. Yeah. We've always been this kind of, like, eh, whatever sucks dick. You know? Like, it's like that well, was being spray paint. Like, that was being graffitied in 2,000 years ago. What ended up happening was the Middle Ages, right? I mean, medieval times screwed us up as a... As a, especially, yes. uh, well, you know what? I want to say especially in the West, but really it was the entire world because yeah. everyone was fighting over like religious iconography and like land. And, but it was, yeah, it was like a, the dark ages were dark for a reason. And it set, it set human civilization back. So, cause we were, we were pretty wild. And then we got like, this <laughs> life is only pain and only the next <laughs> life is better. And it took several hundred years to get out of that because we were just like we're all serfs and there's like two kings and boy this sucks <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah yep and we're still fighting for that dude it's wild oh that's a fun list though i love conspiracies like that mm -hmm. well this mini sode is basically uh <laughs> just a patreon exclusive episode for uh, a few weeks before there we, you drop go. It. we drop it out there thank, thank you all we so don't much get, pack in the value on this patreon hell yeah Pack it in, dude. That's what we do. Cram that value in. Cram that value so fucking tight. So much value. God, we'll be back weird. with the next Pack minisode in. after the next episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, you should also have, if you're listening to this, 
Uh, the $10 tier as well gets like the behind the scenes notes and stuff. So if you want to tear through like nine pages of outline for part one of Skinwalker, hey, that'll be up there for you to check out. That's fun. Uh, That's cool. It is fun. It's got pictures and everything. It's a good time. All right, y'all. We're out of here. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Peace out. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Chilluminini. Chilluminini. Oh, mini, mini, chimmy, chimmy. Chimmy episode. Uh, That's us. Four? Five? No, this is six. It's a chili changa. It's a, ch it's a chili changa. I'm, yeah. Uh, it's great. I, I don't know what you boys, if you've brought anything. I think Alex has something. Um, yeah. I just, I'm bringing knowledge on this episode. Okay. Uh, I right. got reached I'll out to by a, by a bunch of... Uh, of people, one particular person who claims that they work for NASA and can prove it if I decide that, that I want proof of NASA. Um, but one of the reasons proof of NASA, yeah, NASA. What do you mean proof of that NASA? they work for NASA? That they work. Oh, that, proof that they work. Yeah, for NASA? yeah, yeah. That okay. they're not just lying to me. Uh, but but okay. uh, before we go there, because I don't think that's as long or as exciting All as, right, as much. NASA. Yeah, I mean that's cool that they work at NASA. But uh, Alex, what do you got? Okay, so. I have something from your ne neck of the woods, Ooh. Mathis, uh, New England. in Wilmington at Market Basket, Wilmington Market Basket in Boston. Uh, okay. Or at least in Massachusetts. Yeah. I'm not exactly I know sure. where Wilmington is. Yeah. A ghost sighting at Massachusetts Market Basket has created a stir as customers keep a lookout for the Victoria era specter in the frozen food aisle. Okay. So this is, so this is, wait, what? I, yes. okay. So. I know exactly where this market is, by the way. <laughs> I know. Okay, that's perfect. I could drive there. <laughs> that's great. So we can. So you can verify this if you want. I kind of want uh, to, actually. Yeah. Let's uh, continue, yeah. please. So there was somebody who works there who posted about the ghost in her local Facebook group. It's a girl named Christiana okay. who works in the bakery, in case you're going to actually head down. Oh, there. I want to so bad. I'm just going to show and up, Christiana. Said, I'm here to speak with you. Yeah, so she describes it as a older woman in Victoria era nightgown and hair cap standing in the frozen food aisle, and she said she saw her and then she looked down and then she looked back up and the woman was gone, and she and the quote is she looked kind of like melancholy and a little angry, so it was kind of a creepy kind of sense, but it was something. <laughs> that's her. That's that's her. That's her. Uh, that's her quote. That's her official quote. And it said she looked all around the store. She didn't see this per this person. She said that when she saw her, I guess it seemed like a person, not like a right. It just like an ethereal... actual person was there. Yeah, and then so she went to Facebook. She went to the Facebook group, which is probably like some type of paranormal group. And she says, "This is going to sound really strange, but has anyone seen a ghost in the Wilmington Market Basket?" <laughs> and a bunch of people jumped on the post, and they were like, "I've seen this very same ghost." At the market basket. And she said, I had no idea it was going to blow up. I mean, I just posted a random status on Facebook saying, has, uh, has anyone seen a ghost? Because I just wanted to connect with people. What the hell? I got to go. Yeah. So people started going to the market basket. And I can actually see a tweet of it. Uh, so I can see the very market basket that we're talking about here, which is not a store that we have. Uh, on the oh, Facebook really? Website. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, but... Uh, they, uh, they, people actually started going to that store to see if they could see the ghost. So there's uh, Tiffany from Balerica who said, I think you mean looking... Bill Ricca. <laughs> okay, well, that's not how it's spelled. <laughs> Fucking East Coast America. Uh, we are looking, we are trying to find her, but we haven't seen her. Maybe she's from the area. Maybe she is looking for someone. Maybe she's just not crossed over, which, you know, is sort of supposing a lot, but. Yeah, I guess that's how she felt about it. <laughs> uh, Don from Wilmington says, I just don't believe in ghosts. I've been coming here for 35 years and haven't seen a ghost. <laughs> Even Seth Moulton of Massachusetts, the, the I was saying, that's a congressman. I know, I, I know yeah. of him. He said, apparently a ghost is haunting the Wilmington market basket. I thought I only needed to worry about witches and ghouls in hashtag Salem. Oh God, he's such that guy too. He's like, he's like that nerdy, <laughs> like, like me if he's I like just less, like stop. He's like a less, uh, like if I didn't let myself, you know, find myself. Just uptight suit, dad jokes. Just like a non-bigoted Mike Huckabee. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. we love to see it. Uh, so according to Market Basket themselves, Market Basket has said that to their knowledge. Their stores are free from ghostly visitors. <laughs> as far as we know, all our stores are ghost free. But if there's, and this is Justine Griffin, who works for Market Basket. And she said, but if there's anything to it, 
She's probably attracted to our Victorian era prices. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, never uh, one to shy away. Up. Never one to shy away from a PR hey, man. From, from a PR moment. <laughs> Very taking one out of the the Room Twenty Three book. Uh, uh, what was it? Room Twenty Three. Room Two Twenty Three. Yeah, three three oh three. You know, you know the hotel yeah, that yeah. I was talking about the other day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this girl said she had never believed in ghosts before. The girl who originally saw it. But th this experience changed her mind. She says, I guess I would want her to come back maybe and like I could talk to her. I don't know if you guys can talk to ghosts, but I think it would be cool to see what she's up to. <laughs> I want to go now. I want to go. I got to go. I got to make a drive out there and just go shopping at like before they close, I guess would be the best time to go and just wander the frozen food section looking for. A she's probably mad that the turkey's frozen, dude. I wouldn't be mad. It's hard to keep a turkey fresh. She doesn't know that, that she's Victorian. I pro I bet you she's just marveling at it, like when Khrushchev or whatever came to the grocery store in the. <laughs> that's 60s true. That's just true. Like, There's just food wow. everywhere. Well, I love what's it. Up with the, what's up with the nightgowns, though? Everybody's dying in their nightgowns. Everyone. Well, well yeah, every man. time. Think about it. You die. I guess. I guess I'll, in your bed. Yeah, I guess a lot of people are dying in their nightgowns. If you think, think about, about it. how many people just like. Uh, remember when we talked about the Black Widows? I'd be a the, nude ghost. The female I'd be serial like, killer. She just ladies will wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> going out, ghost. Of course, going out clean. <laughs> oh I yeah. Love that. If I'm if I'm going out and be like, strip me down. I was born naked. I will die. <laughs> Hell naked. yes. <laughs> Hell yes. Hell yeah. Uh, I want to get the actual exact rundown that I want to read you guys from the person who sent me a message here. Uh, well, can I? Shout outs to uh, MB, NBC10 Boston for that story. Well, while you do that, can I give you a short little story? Please do. That I yeah. thought was fascinating. Please. So this week, I saw that um, there was a bunch of headlines. I'm sure you all saw them, which was, Man forced to self-isolate alone in ghost town with chilling past and spirits. What? Ooh. No, I did not see this. So a dude uh, bought a ghost town in uh, Cerro Cordo. Can I ask? What kind of deal he got on that ghost town? So he bought it on the cheap. It was a, uh, a, a relative. So I'll read you the story. This is the type of shit that I was thinking about when ah, this started, okay. by the way. This is like exactly where my head was at, too. <laughs> so fascinated by its terrifying past, entrepreneur Brett Underwood bought an abandoned California mining town for $1.4 million. He bought the whole town. That's not for 1.4 mil. That's cheap. Yeah. Uh, he visits Cerro Cordo, which is just 22 buildings, and it's been the subject of paranormal TV shows, all that kind of stuff. But he normally has a guy there taking care of it, right? But the dude there taking care of it, when coronavirus broke out, he was like, I got my wife, she's in a town over, I got to go take care of her. Dude's like, okay, I'll come out there, I'll watch over the, the property, you go take care of your family. So this Underwood guy goes out there, and as he does, he planned on being there like, you know, a week. Heavy snowfall comes in, traps him in the town. Oh, no. <laughs> no running water, no fresh food. It's miles from anywhere else. So he's basically just stranded, wilderness manning this thing. He's um, playing Red Dead Redemption is what he's doing. Yeah. He's the next larping. town is several miles away, and Brent knows a few people who can get in contact with if things get really bad. But what's making all of this more exciting, I guess, for the you know the news of the world is that besides the fact that he is, you know, one bad day away from dying out there, he's noticing <laughs> weird, spooky things happening. Oh, no. Uh-oh, he's in the Undead Nightmare expansion. <laughs> yeah. He skipped the main story, bro. Yeah. Basically, he says, uh, when I first got out here, I was in a t-shirt enjoying myself, and then it snowed for four days and there was no way out. He claims that this old mining town has a chilling past, saying that residents really had no authority. There was no government authority. There was no law. Very wild People west. were just left to govern themselves. It was a, a mining town, right? And so there would be about a murder a week, he said. Oh, God. He points to the fact that there are bullet holes in all – like every building has bullet holes. <laughs> uh, his home that he lives in is above the old collapsed mine entrance, and he knows that underneath him, several hundred feet below – are is a collapsed mine where people are dead and their bodies were never recovered. Oh God, yeah. What the fuck? He didn't know any of this till he till he got there. No, he knew it, he, and he bought the property because of this stuff. But he, you know, didn't live there. He had a guy who lived on the land and took care of it for him. 
And his idea was he was going to renovate it and sort of, you know, have, have a whole thing where people could come out there. It was an investment property. And now he's stuck there, and he's like, yeah, I see ghost children walking around. Um, oh, oh, he says, I stay in a room with ghost children, but I haven't yet seen them. Uh, he says, there's things moving around. I see curtains move. I hear things at night. There's no draft, but things drop inside the houses. Uh, he lives in a place inside that was built the in houses, eight- dude. That's what w- the fuck? I, I, I want to be there so bad. It's like Westworld. <laughs> like, I hate this. No, he I want to be there. Building that was built in 1871 has no running water. He's been forced to melt down snow and limited supplies of fresh food. Uh, he's been living off rice and cans of tuna, some of which have expired. God bless him. Yeah. That's wild. I would love to, man, I've never been able to visit a ghost town, but just being able to wander through one would be really cool. Urban exploration. Apparently that's what it's known for. It's known for ghost hunters going there. That's awesome. My, my friend, his, his like, uh, dad or grandpa or somebody like, like a couple of my bandmates went out with him to his house, like over in like, uh, you know, where the desert meets the mountains in California here. I forget what the name of the town is there. Sure. But he was he was out there and they realized that on his land he had like a whole like western town that he had going that people used to come visit and they'd like walk through the buildings and there'd be like sort of like cloth dummies everywhere and shit like sitting up and like de- decomposing and shit. Fucks me up. That's that's crazy. Well, my news isn't as exciting, but I got a couple things I want to talk about. First, uh this is actually in reference to we we did a bunch of mini sodes and we we released a compilation of one. Uh, and in it, we were, uh, that's where the Ezekiel's wheel topic we talked about a little bit of and, and like the footage being brought down and panic about all that stuff. And while I was wrong, this man doesn't work for NASA. He works for the NSA, <laughs> which is very, very different. Very different. Yes. Um, but he said a reason a lot of these things are brought down or uh, classified, whether footage of UFOs, like the ones that were leaked and stuff like that, isn't be necessarily because they're trying to hide uh, aliens and stuff. The real reason and a real important thing is if enemy states can figure out where these cameras are by what they're looking at, their their leeway over them, like just for like just spying purposes, are completely useless. They basically don't want people to know uh, or other countries to know where our satellites are looking. And so sure, trajectory purposes, and yeah. Things like so that. Yeah. a lot of that stuff is super classified, which is why he says it's it's it can be dangerous when uh, stuff like the UFO footage is released. And it's not being declassified right away because they're not sure if it's something that they need to. Where was this t- test flight happening? Where in the ocean was it? Do Is it a place we need to hide from the fact that we're testing airplanes or running airplanes over there? So a lot of that can be the reason as well. And that just felt like it's good for clarification purposes on top of the idea sure. of like conspiracy UFOs. Hey, there's an actual real reason on top of that. But I'm more on a God UFO. Damn. What was that? I'm just saying, God damn, it's like weird that we're in these times right now yeah. where like perceptions are shifting yeah it's it's well especially since the pentagon declassified the ufo uh footage but uh beyond that more fsb or frbs have been being found which is another thing i wanted to talk about in the article that i brought for today uh the frbs for those who don't know are fast radio burst signals they're the things that we that scientists have been discovering out in the milky way and things that they've been trying to track for a long time Because these things are short-lived, they are often only identified in satellite data after the signal was recorded. Finding out where they came from and what produced them has been largely a mystery. However, recently, we've been discovering even more. The most recent one being discovered on, uh, technically, two days ago from today's recording, May 1st. Um, These were discovered, however, most the first FRBs were discovered over a decade ago. Since then, they've been trying to work out what's been causing them. One of the biggest hypothesized uh, ideas is that cataclysmic events are causing them, Collision of two neutron stars, collapsing black holes, etc., are kind of causing these things. But sure. these hypotheses are beginning to be questioned because repeating FRBs are being uncovered. A black hole How can. How missable o- are they? Huh? How missable are they? They have. They only can find them after they go back and go and go through their footage. So they. It's. I guess it's like pretty hard to find, and scientists are the ones finding them. I don't know how hard that makes it, but. Well, I guess what I'm asking is just like. Is it possible that that's the first one that they noticed? Yeah, it, good question. I don't know. Um, they, but their thing is saying is like a black hole can only collapse once, and like all these like a neutron stars can only collide once because when the uh, but when these FRBs are being repeated, scientists realize there either must be another explanation entirely or a source that they're not sure of that can produce them in bursts because they're starting to realize these FRBs are coming from the same place. They're repeating, 
and it's not just happening once, which throws out the idea of like a black hole collapsing or whatever. Yeah, uh, I mean, it could. It, there's there's a theory that I like where it's uh, uh, imagine a like um a sun emitting some sort of like mm. radioactive like whoa whoa yep. whoa, and then if a planet moves in front of the sun. It blocks a part of that. Yes, I've heard and, that. And one so too. the wool, wool, wool becomes like a wool, 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 and and so that happens every so often, and so it like leaves a, a signal that people are like, oh well, and so even though it might not be like an alien doing it, it's fascinating to be like, oh that there's something yeah. that way to look at one day. They actually earlier this year found one that was coming from an uh, they call it an odd V shaped star forming region in a huge spiral galaxy, half a billion light years away from where we are. But all these FRBs that they found, none of them come from our own galaxy. They're sure. always coming from other galaxies, nothing from our own. And the latest discovery was announced on an astronomer's telegram by Paul Schultz of the University of Toronto, Canada. And uh, they, they're, they're, it's known over at SGR1935 plus 2154. That's where it's, the active burst is coming from. Um, they believe this one might be coming from a collapsed core of a massive star. That had a, an extremely powerful magnetic field, or a, a planet-killing laser, right? Or aliens trying up. to communicate with us via shortwave radio. God bless. You know what? Speaking mm. of that, I watched a great documentary about space and the you know mm. the usual size of space thing. Where at the end of it, you feel so tiny. Yes. Um, they were talking about signals and how you know scientists are receiving signals and SETI's looking for life and all that stuff, like. If an alien species, like the universe is so big and expanding so rapidly that there's the potential for some alien species who could send signals the speed of light and their signal still would never reach us because they're expanding so far away so rapidly mm -hmm. that even if they tried to... It would never reach us, yeah. Our expanding away is... is and their distance, the speed it's of light faster. would never get to us. We it would never happen. And they could be actively trying, but we never. That's how big the universe is. That's crazy. And that's only the observable universe. We don't know that's what's more beyond than that. Big. That's like embiggening. Like that's like that's like more than just big. Yeah. It's like so big that it's still getting bigger. Which like, which yeah. I think a lot of the reasons for people who don't believe in aliens is like, well, in order for aliens to even visit us, they'd have to figure out a way to travel through basically time and space at the same time. Like they, well, I think there's a vast difference between believing in in life out visiting there intelligent and believing life. that they visited because right, right. it's so it boggles so our unlikely. minds. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. There has to be life. But there's so many planets that is beyond. It makes no sense to say there's nothing else out. There. I agree. That's so egotistical to be like we're the only ones. Yeah, it's just we. It's just like when we do turn to the aliens, we're also so egotistical, like you said, that a lot of the lore we make ourselves the center of it. Sure. Orgon energy is like a really good example of like, we're just so important because we emit emotion energy. And it's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's like so far away from science. I know. It's, like, it's just, well, might as well we be did. True. Come might on, guys. Well Come fake. on on the wiki. You saw the Orgon energy collector. The the wooden room with the chair. Yeah, inside? it was scientific, yeah. dude. All right. It's, it looks can be deceiving. Don't judge a book by its cover. That's going to wrap it up for, for sure. this mini sode, everybody. We're going to disappear and we'll be back with another mini-sode very, very shortly. Thank you all so much for your support on Patreon. We love it very, very much. Thank you. Really. Thanks, and we'll guys. see you next one. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, welcome, everybody, to the fucking... I just, we're just going to go in uh, with that. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the mini-sode, the next mini-sode after Skinwalker Ranch episode three. It's like we never even left. It's like, it's like we, never I, we were left. just talking about that big orange tube with the high Jesus in there. <laughs> and now you don't even have to wait a whole week. We're just here. We're now, just here with more. Again, with more crazy bullshit to tell you about. Is it crazy bullshit or are we coming at you with facts? I Well, you haven't heard my article yet. And we'll see. Well, let's. OK, we said we we're going to talk a little bit about this more in the minisode. I don't even know if there's much to talk about, honestly, now to think about it. But Andrew WK, well, you just straight up lied to people. Well, Andrew WK <laughs> tweeting about us is awesome. He did it no. one year to the day that we released the episode. He did it exactly on May third, which is when we released it last year. Yeah, he tweeted in the third person. Uh, he clearly listened to the podcast because he references the topic in the tweet, and uh, the the response tweets are so good because it's, some of them are some of them are like like knights coming to our defense. <laughs> Some, some of them are people who fully get it. Some of them are, are knights going to the defense of Andrew WK and being yeah. like, of course you're real. I met you a bunch. It's like, yeah. 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 Dude. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. I think I just want to th- I, I my 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 hope is that he is just winking at us from across the Internet. I think today. he is. And that's 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 all I really want. Like to me, that's the best way that this could be. That if is he, exactly what he's doing. The dude knows. Ex- of course, he's in on it. I, I mean, did two in the podcast. We did a two part on the podcast. I feel like you, we we all got to the same conclusion. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah I mean? of course. Dude's I feel like a it's good the same. Time. Yeah, he's just th- like I feel like he's keeping the legend alive, and that's all that matters. When it's and, time like, to party, he will party hard. Yes, <laughs> that's all you need to know about Andrew W. That's and all you need to if know. You, yeah, and if you needed to know whether or not I listened to. Andrew WK on loop for like three months after making that episode. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> that first album, <laughs> man, it's a great driving record. It's just so good. It's just so good. And Andrew WK, talk. if you're listening and you're a secret Patreon hyper fan, you're welcome on the podcast at any time. I'm just saying. Just oh let my us God. know. I will do you don't have to come talk about that shit. No. You can just come talk about anything. Anything. <laughs> we can talk we don't about want to talk about it. Talk about we'll talk about anything else. We can air it's guitar honestly, for forty five minutes today. straight. It's a good workout. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I am going to be talking about something that people are not surprised to hear me talk about that I'm just thrilled to discuss. And what? Uh, Alex, I don't know what you brought, but I'll go first because yeah, I feel like something it. we've already talked about, but or, or br- briefly mentioned uh, in Skinwalker Ranch. But it's official. The Pentagon has officially declassified those three UFO videos that were originally leaked in 2017, were acknowledged in 2019 by the Navy, and now officially declassified now in 2020 by the Pentagon. This is an article, obviously, from CNN, released on April 29th, 2020. The Pentagon has officially released three short videos showing unidentified aerial phenomena, which is what they now call it, that had previously been released by a private company, where they're referencing to the Stars Academy with Tom yeah, DeLonge. Yeah, to be clear, these are the exact same clips that we've been talking about for, like, five months. Correct. It yeah. is. The, the, the private company is Tom DeLonge to the Stars Academy. The videos show what appear to be unidentified flying objects rapidly moving while recorded by infrared cameras. Two of the videos contain service members reacting in awe at how quickly the objects are moving. One voice speculates that it might be a drone. The Navy previously acknowledged the veracity of the videos in September of last year. They are officially releasing them now in, quote, in order to clear up any misconceptions by the public on whether or not the footage has been circulating was real or whether or not these uh, there is more to the videos according to the Pentagon spokesperson, Sue Go. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> to be clear, to be clear, yeah, to everybody who's like, this is disclosure, right? Yep. That's yep. not what this is. Well, right? is it, though? I mean, what this is, no, to be clear, what this is is the Pentagon going, I fucking know, right? We have this shit. Yes. We don't know what it is. Correct. You don't know what it is, and it's real, and that's that's it. You so, know what I mean? They're not saying, it's not the same as the Pentagon saying, Aliens exist, Correct. which is the main thing, which Obviously. is the main thing that I'm getting at. Yeah. Uh, however, we, the thing to look at when when things like this are happening is what else is going on under the surface? What are that? What else are they doing now? One of the big things uh, that is known that's kind of just common knowledge and you talk about you, you, you listen to any of the interviews with uh, any of the pilots, Navy pilots and whatnot. Reporting UFOs is always something that you just got made fun of for. Anytime you you did it, it was something that like everybody found out and like in in the like, canteen you just be kind of joe uh, kind of poked out and made fun of and then you have the people who'd be whisper be like like what it was like what was it like um again you can get kind of detailed interviews uh by by these people i think what's his name the one that was on rogan talks about it uh, uh heavily the pi- the air po- the force pilot that that actually had these videos he was there the one oh, from the, these videos the guy who was like the in the black ops or whatever yeah i can't like. remember but he's like it's always been something that it's kind of just been hush hush and nobody's really talked about it because you're made fun of however in April of last well last month, they changed how reporting of UFOs is done. No longer is it something that's kind of hush hush. Now in place, which you'd think it'd be something they'd have in place officially, but they do so now, uh, have in place for people who see pil- uh, pilots who do see UFOs to properly report these to the proper channels and get it officially reported. Kind of maneuvering it out of the uh, the realm of you know, kind of you, you talk about it, but then you just kind of ignore it. Most people are just like, yeah, you, whatever. There's nothing you can do about it and moving it to more official. It's very much the government stepping forward and saying, OK, we now fully acknowledge these things are real. And now there's an official channel for everybody who sees them to report them to us. Now, their excuse is it's it's uh, obviously to help, you know, uh, report maybe th- th- whether they belong to like an enemy country, basically to report them to make sure that they're not some other planes. However, wouldn't that already exist? 
it, to report enemy aircraft in our aerial space, that's something that sh I imagine already goddamn exists. What do I think you mean? it's just to I think it's just to put people's minds at ease. That's what I, I feel just... like as well. It's more like the public excuse of like now these kinds of incursions can be both a security risk and a pose for safety hazard for both Navy and Air Force aviation. For safety and security concerns, the Navy and USAF take these reports very seriously and investigates each and every report. Yeah, uh, I think it just kind of is because inevitably by releasing something like this yes. and being like we don't know what it is, it inevitably it inevitably begs the question of like how the fuck did this sneak past you? How do you not? Why don't you know what this is? What the fuck is it if you don't know what it is? And right. that that is a that is that's something that's scary. It is, of course, it's scary. I mean, even without, even if we're a hundo percent sure that aliens do not exist and Earth is the only life in the universe, the idea that there's that there's things flying through our airspace that we don't know what they are yeah. and they're evading us and they have the ability to move in ways that nothing that we know about can move, you know, that's just scary. Yeah. So I of think course. I think a lot of the stuff I think a lot of the stuff that the government has to do to like the Pentagon has to do to like PR this properly and just mm -hmm. address those questions without stirring up panic. I think a lot of that is what we're seeing here. You know, yeah. I like like I'm saying, like saying that they don't know what it is and that it's real is not the same as them saying aliens are here. Ex yeah, extraterrestrials. Yeah, yeah. No. And so I yeah, I, I think that a lot of the evasion that's going on here just has to do with damage control. Yeah. In terms of PR. And it's important too to keep in mind over the many years the Pentagon has had many different uh programs researching UFOs and the most recent one uh that was closed that we are aware of is twenty twelve. I would wager that there's still another program this happening. Guy, I mean I don't know, you know what, what I mean? like he's like it it closed in twenty twelve but it kept going for seven years in secret, and only I know about it. I'm the only person who's ever talked about it. It's like who who are you speaking of uh, particularly there? Uh, it's the same guy. It's the guy who was talking about the the stuff in Vegas, uh, being held in a private hangar. It's like the guy who used to work for the like Lazar UFO. Bob Lazar. No, no, no. Uh, it's, Luis it's, it's, Elizondo. Yeah, Elizondo. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. Name. He's uh, the former he Pentagon official guy. Yeah, yeah, he's the one who was like, I used to be in the program, yep. and then the program shut down, but then it was like a wet works, like black, like under the table secret ops program till now. And that's where it feels weird to me because that feels like that's where the fan fiction starts. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, I agree. It's yeah. weird. It's weird. I mean, I'm I'm happy with the go government like soft saying like, okay, they're here, whatever these things are, earthly or otherwise, we just don't know what they are. And hey, okay, we acknowledge it. That's that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit because but it's isn't always that interesting, exciting. Even as a even as a f total skeptic, isn't that like so interesting, Jesse? Uh, you don't have to represent every skeptic in the world, but like, isn't that interesting that there's like this thing out there that we don't know what it is? Uh, yes, uh, of course. But I think that's not skept. I mean, well, like, skeptics can admit that they don't know a thing. I mean, you don't have to entertain the idea that aliens right. are real to feel that I'll this do is that an for interesting you. thing. I'll carry you know what I'm saying? Heavyweight for you. Like, right. even as somebody who's not, like, looking for any reason that, to say that aliens exist, like, it's a scary phenomenon to think about that there's this vehicle out there that is moving in a way that we don't know what it is. Well, I think that's – and I think that goes back to the original reasoning why – I think you guys are talking about this – why they would not say anything is because it was how do we explain how it's gotten to our airspace – and yeah, how is it moving the, the way answers. it is, and how yeah. you know, how fa how is it as fast as it is? And it, uh, I mean, the fact that like it's just it's weird. I'm just waiting for Trump to be like, I know what it is, <laughs> but I can't tell you. <laughs> well, I know what it is. <laughs> uh, that's my topic for the day. Yeah. All right. Uh, so mine is about the Cornish Owl Man of Mon and Smith. And this is from, what? And this is from <laughs> Here we go. Uh, CornwallLive.com. CornwallLive.com. Uh, yeah, and if you don't know what the Cornish Owl Man of Mon and Smith is, it's a half man, half owl creature uh, that has been haunting Cornwall since at least the 1920s. And that is a fact. <laughs> Jack. Uh, <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, this, this uh, church. Uh, it's called St. Monin and St. St Stephen's Church is in Monin Smith. I'm probably butchering that. This I can like just I it seems like it's easy to pronounce just based on what letters are there. But I've learned my lesson too many times with things <laughs> in in this in this language that I just, you know, I don't know, Cornish 
stuff. I'm not trying to touch. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. But uh, it's a, it's basically like exactly what you're imagining. It's like a low, it's like a rural church that's like in the woods. You know, it's right by the ocean, which is like awesome, right? Uh, but this owl-sized creature that has been around, like in, in and around it, uh, is like has is huge. It's like the size of a human. It is has it like Mothman, like, but Owl Man. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> and it has long owl claws, and it has glowing eyes, just like Mothman. Oh, that's, and it's been that's just another a... dead. That's just another description of the Mothman, dude. Okay, but this is not the Mothman. This is the Owl Man of Mon and Smith. <laughs> the first time, and this is weird because the the first sighting, even though they say it goes back to the twenties. In the same article, the first sighting uh, is from April of 1976. Okay, <laughs> wait, so, I wait a minute. <laughs> There's a few decades I there. Look, I can't, I can't speak to that. Apparently, it ties in with some folk tales or something like that. But we'll see. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm going through this with you. This is a journey of discovery. We're both I can't, making okay, together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's these two teenage girls that are on holidays with their parents in Mon and Smith, which is probably how you say it because. It doesn't sound natural to me, but uh, all right. So they walk down to the church and on top of the church tower, they see oh. something that they call, quote, a bird man with wings and feathers. And they said that they were so scared by the, what they saw that their dad was like, nope. And just like nopes out of Cornwall. When a dad nopes, home. that's when you know it's scary. Dude. He noped the fuck out of Cornwall, right? So that's the first sighting in April of 1976. The next sighting is in July of 1976. And now there's two 14-year-old girls. Okay. And they're camping around this church. But they spotted a giant owl. They think it's an owl. They didn't mention that it's a human-owl hybrid. (laughs) But they said it's an owl the size of a human with glowing Mm. eyes. The quote is around with glowing eyes. So... So at the time that was enough. I guess there was it must have been a slow news week, but or a news couple of months. I don't know. But at this point, I guess there was a little bit of attention being paid to this, like in in the news at this point. And then they, but almost immediately after it gaining public attention, it became like seen as a hoax because all the reports led back to this guy who is a paranormal researcher and a magician. Oh shit. Name, it, yeah, it's not a good combination of jobs to <laughs> is make it not? trustworthy. To be a trustworthy guy and you have to tell someone you're a magician who is somebody who is by definition a guy who tricks people <laughs> and a and a what? paranormal researcher which is a guy who's begging you not <laughs> to believe that he's tricking you. <laughs> but, it's just Okay, a, all right, but hey, devil's advocate, he knows all the tricks of the trade. Because he's such a trickster, right. so why would you yeah. not trust him? Right, because he can pre- perform sleight of hand <laughs> on a gray alien. And <laughs> all right, I'm not even going to entertain this anymore. Okay, so he was he was he was like getting hype about this at the time. He was like stepping into the limelight. This guy, Doc Shields, Tony Shields, Tony Doc Shields, and uh, he. Uh, I'm putting the quotations around Doc with my voice because they're there in the article. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Uh, he's also known for taking a picture of the Loch Ness monster. Okay, and he, this he guy lived in just a place knows how to do. Oh things. boy, yeah, and he lived in a place that I'm a little more sure about the pronunciation pronunciation of, but still don't get me if it's wrong. Uh, he lived in a place called Saint Ives for a long time before moving to a place which like I'm the body almost, lotion. I was gonna say yeah. like the soap. Right, and then he moved to a place that I'm definitely gonna fuck up called Ponsanuth. Mm-hmm. And if you think I'm fucking it up, you should see how it's spelled because it really doesn't seem like I'm fucking it up, but I'm positive I am. Uh, but uh, now he lives in Ireland. Uh, but because they found that he was like, it was me. Like everybody lost it, like lost all credibility. Uh, and like I guess there's some pretty big owls in Cornwall. Uh, so like seeing a big ass owl is not that wild of a thing. But, but, and there's always a but, since then, there have been many sightings of this creature reported on the internet in, in more recent times. Ooh. So there was a guy from a place called Falmouth, Foulmouth, Falmouth, 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 Falmouth. Uh, a ghost hunter, this is the problem with these articles, <laughs> they make me say anything that's in New England or England yep. or Ireland or anywhere, 
I'm just it, it's it's always a, it's always a roller. Don't worry, I, I'm here for you. Falmouth is. I'm trying. A thing. Listen, I'm trying my best to honor the conventions of language that we have here. <laughs> that's that's the thing that's important. So uh, this ghost hunter from Falmouth claimed he spotted the owl man and that his friend got attacked by it. Oh which shit! Is pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, a, and that's just it. Just says ghost hunter. That's all we got on that guy. <laughs> And they made Ghost Hunter one word, which is, like, bold. <laughs> uh, Mark Davies was in the graveyard uh, with his friend Chris Power, 36, from Manchester. Okay, that's okay. them. Uh, Mark said there's ley lines, which are under the ground near the church, and they okay. give off paranormal activity. Of course. Okay. And then he's, and this is all in quotes. He said, there was a hissing in the trees, and you could hear flapping. I heard it go right over my head, and I was shocked. That's when I saw the figure, and it had horns on its head. It was mad. It has horns now. Oh, yeah. On the meter I had, which picks up electric magnetic energy that we use to detect ghosts, I was getting conscious replies to my questions through it. That's telling me there's a demonic energy and it wasn't safe. My mate got attacked. He had scratches on his arm. Jesse, you're going to love this next part. I'm waiting. His, cam his camera broke, too. <laughs> he didn't see anything he just felt this surge of energy he didn't realize till about half an hour later when he felt some burning <laughs> it's not a place i would advise anyone to go there alone let's put it that way how about that irrefutable proof but apparently in general the story of the owl man has been long forgotten almost like something that happened in the 70s that Made no splash when everybody thought it was fake. <laughs> but it's been around uh, since the 20s. But apparently they're saying this this reporter, whose name is Charlotte Beckhart, uh, she said that she went down to the village to, like, get, get, like, the line on it in the village. And people – she literally wrote this line. People said they had not heard its name for many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> uh and there's uh, in the church at the church that she went to, there's a there's a uh, inscription in Cornish that I'm not going to pronounce, but it translates to it is good to draw nigh to the Lord. And uh, it's a 13th century church and uh, the back door to the church shows scary hand marks as if people struggle to open the door to escape from the owl man. That's a little bit of a. That last bit's license. a bit of a stretch. She's taking a dramatic license. There. <laughs> yeah. There's no signs anywhere mentioning it. Uh <laughs> And she said that she was intrigued because there's Cornish legends that are, like, popular around here. So she decided to ask a local why the tale, like, lost steam. And the, and the person said, I haven't heard of it mentioned for years and years since it first happened, actually. It was a media event at the time. People were scared to go to the church afterwards. The owl man looked quite menacing from the pictures and drawings made by the girls involved. I don't want to see him. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she's right. Yeah, and she said that the the story isn't popular because the population has changed. She said, the older people have passed away or left, and we have had a lot of newcomers in the village who wouldn't know about it. There's a lot of history going on up there. There are more things going on than what meets the eye. <laughs> she's like what? a Twin Peaks character. Yeah, she's right? like from Deadly Premonition. <laughs> a member of my family heard spooky noises from a tree, although there was no wind. My husband and I also saw a very strange robin flying straight into a grave. Oh, it must be an omen for the owl man. <laughs> uh, and that's the entire article, except that at the end she said, in another full sentence just off by itself, not quite a terrifying owl man then. <laughs> wow, that last dig. Which, like... Damn, sticking it to the owl man. <laughs> what a way to I think yeah. it up I think, on the owl I man. I think maybe the real conspiracy is that the the Mothman wrote this article. I think so. He's just trying, trying to, to discredit cover his, his 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 bird beaked rival. <laughs> oh God! Oh, what a comic! The Cornish yeah. Owl Man versus the Mothman. I mean, if you think about it, right? Like the Chicago if we're talking Mothman. about like maybe the Owl Man is like the Hydrox to the Oreo. Oh my God! Because if you think about the sound that the Mothman makes, like if you t if I told you that was an owl, it would make like way more sense, right? Yeah, it would make a whole lot more sense because yeah, it so comes like, from the Mothman. The Mothman stole the Owl Man's voice. That's what I'm saying. Like maybe it's like a Ursula situation. Oh shit! It's so maybe, good. Maybe the owl. Maybe that. Maybe the Mothman. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the Owl Man has like a shell. <laughs> the Mothman has like a shell around his neck that that's like has the owl man. It's voice. like the dry the mal man. The mal man. The mal man. The male man. The mal man. The mal. The meow man. The meow man. The meow man. Well, and that's and that's quite enough of that. Yeah, uh, I have a story. It. If you guys want to hear it, of course yeah. we do. 
<laughs> oh my god. No, yeah, wow. Is it an evil story? <laughs> Everyone knows that dolls can be pretty creepy. Yeah, I have not taken Harold out of the closet in like six months. Did you write this story? Is this One a short mother story? in Houston has taken to social media to reveal why she believes her daughter, Aurelia, has Plays been too much haunted League of by her doll. Her Elsa doll. Oh, from shit. From the movie Frozen. Let it go. Out the window. In a viral Facebook post, which has now been deleted, Emily Madonia. Aurelia Madonia is this? Oh. Explained that Aurelia's toy had first started to freak them out when it began singing and talking in Spanish while switched off. Oh. Do I remember this? Did this she, video get viral? She and her husband, Matt, decided to throw the doll out and their do uh, with their daughter's blessing. But since then, it's found its way back to their home. No. Nope. No. Not once. No. Nope. But twice. No, this is a Twilight Zone episode. Yep. This is the em literal plot to a Twilight Zone Emily episode. Emily wrote, Matt threw it away weeks ago, and we found it inside on a wooden bench. Okay, so we were weirded out and tightly wrapped it in its own garbage bag and put the garbage bag inside another garbage bag filled with other garbage and put it at the bottom of the garbage can underneath a bunch of other bags of garbage, wheeled it out to the curb, and it was collected on garbage day. The oh, family then went day. on holiday, thinking the whole thing was behind them and it was just a weird coincidence. Maybe they forgot uh, to actually throw it away. When they returned home, the doll was back outside on, si on the side of their house. And it said, I don't like you very much. <laughs> we were out of town, forgot about it. In and then fact, Aurelia I think says, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Aurelia says, Mom, I saw Elsa in the backyard. What? After throwing it out, it didn't work. Emily decided she had to be rid of it once and for all. Burn One it. of her friends on oh, Facebook yeah. named Chris, who lives 1,500 miles away, had been entertained by the tale. She confirmed she mailed it to him. And Chris. Yo, if you just put a little duct tape over the mouth, it's all done. Good. Chris yeah. taped, the, taped Elsa. To his car to stop it from going anywhere else. Fingers crossed it stays there. One person commented, you should have burned it. If you don't burn it, then it's going to be possessed. Another person wrote, I have thoroughly enjoyed this saga. I hope it all <laughs> returns. And one person wrote, yo, what a crazy situation. <laughs> I can I can't, visually I can't see even the imagine what I would be doing if that doll was tormenting my family. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God this is not happening to me. <laughs> I like that a friend was like, yeah, send it to me. I'll put it on my car. <laughs> now, that would be you, Jesse, would it not? This, it's crazy that the story started with like a demonic possession inside, like of a child. <laughs> of a child. And it ended doll. with like a fucking busted ass Elsa doll taped to some dude's car. It's <laughs> <laughs> 96 like Durango. And he has the, to leave it there forever because if he doesn't, it'll get out. Dude. Yeah, you can actually look it up. There's a Facebook photo of it leaning against their house that's still out just, there. It's I just so remember looking. that I, I want to do an episode on James Dean's car. Why? Why? His crashed car? Don't look it up. All right. Okay. D no, nope, that it up. sounds like an, an Alex episode. I might have to, th I might, I'm, I'm getting so, I might have to slide that in before JFK now. Yeah, we need, we'll we, we're going to need some buffer episodes between the end of Skinwalker and the next like big one. Cause like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if we're doing JFK after, if we're doing like uh, MK Ultra after, but. We got a lot. Yeah, we got a lot planned, guys. There's I got so a lot much of notes. planned. <laughs> I got a lot of notes. I've been reading a lot of books. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all, Patreon supporters, for making this happen for us. We appreciate you and we love you very much. Hell uh, yeah. We are gonna bounce. We'll be back next week with a new mini sode. Thank you for your support. Goodbye. Thank y'all. Goodbye. Burr. Perfect. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's the Chaluma Mini. Chaluma Mini. So, Pick up your shoes. Hey. This is the Lucy Goosey one. Oh, shit. Episode Mini 8. Mini 8, baby. Mini 8. I've got a fun article. Alex, you had to dig for it before we even recorded Skinwalker today. So, I just wanted to find the link for it. I brought a, a crazy one. It's like not even quite Chaluminati material, and then it totally becomes Chaluminati material by the end. Well, I'll start with mine then, because mine, as always, is kind of just like more promises for tomorrow, but it's exciting stuff, for sure. and I'm excited to see what it is. This comes from Chronica, which is a news source out in uh, by Chr Chronicle is, you know, the actual oh, I English. Thought, I thought I thought it was like a weed thing. I'm glad. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been great. Oh, Chronica, the weed article would be great. Now, this is from Spanish to English because this is all happening in Argentina. 
It is due to an order received by the security force that material must be delivered on May 11th with written audio, video, and or photographic information about UFOs in the Argentine sky that have been labeled, quote, very urgent, unquote. Why urgent? I don't know. I don't know. Following the request like... made by the, an organization dedicated to studying UFOs, the federal police will make a very urgent report on these phenomena that occurred in the Argentine sky. The material related to this topic, whether written or audiovisual, will be public as long as it does not put national security at risk. The original request for UFO sightings was prepared on May 6th before Alicia Pilar Mericalar? Mericalar? I'm gonna fuck it. I tried. Responsible for the coordination of access to public information of the sub- Secretariat of Control and Institutional Transparency, Transparency of the Ministry of Security, who in turn raised the request to all the superintendencies of that force. In the text delivered to the authorities of that portfolio, that Sabina Frederick conducts the Commission for the, the Study of UFO Phenomenon in Argentine Republic, asked for, quote, written audio or photog photographic information or material, product of the inf investigation, information, complaint, or guard reports of everything related to anomalous aerial phenomena, UFO, UFO flying saucers, unidentif unidentified flying objects, aerospace phenomena, unusual aerial phenomena, and everything that refers to this concept. Are they going to disclose like tomorrow? That's, that's the hope, right? Like it's just absolute disclosure. But the line that convinces me it won't be is simply as long as it doesn't interfere with national security, which can then be labeled on anything they don't want to be putting out there. It still just is such a weird thing to announce. It's happening a lot. The Pentagon just did it. Now we're going over here. I don't yeah, know. Maybe they're copying. I don't know. Yeah, something's I don't know. A brewing. Something's something does. Brewing. Doesn't it feel like something's brewing? It something's does feel like my inner UFOlogist is, is, is I can smell the, 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 the cooking meatloaf. That is the UFO world ready to tell us all of their secrets. Imagine aliens give us a vaccine. That's the, like, you fuckers. We created you. Stop trying to kill yourselves. I'm just here. Can you imagine? They're like, if you just work together, you would have... This was our test. You could all work together and fix it in, like, a week. But nope, we just want to kill each other. Bunch of monkeys throwing rocks and missiles at each other. I just can't... I, I, I just feel like something's going to happen. Somebody's going to slip up. Somebody's going to say something. And then everybody's going to be like... What? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, that's it for my, my news. When do we find out? Tomorrow, literally tomorrow, May 11th, tomorrow. Oh my God. All right. Next mini-sode, we're going deep on uh, that. Wait, that or it's nothing and we don't talk about it. <laughs> or it's the biggest, or it's the Chiluminati episode next This week, is it. Oh my God, guys. That's ever happened. Tom tomorrow could be the day we wake up into a whole new world. That's Everything true. that tomorrow we know I and believe today ends it tomorrow. <laughs> Stop doing this. <laughs> Good. We Stop could. doing this. Yourself. I like how this is Jesse's first word. <laughs> I feel I feel like I feel like Morgan Freeman in the Shawshank Redemption. You guys are talking about hope and I'm like, hope's yeah, a really dangerous really thing in here. <laughs> also never seen Don't Shawshank Redemption. Do not disclose the alien I need to see that movie <laughs> still too. So Shawshank never seen Redemption? The, Shawshank Redemption is no, I've never seen it. One of my favorite movies ever. Period. I've heard it's a masterpiece. I love that movie. That's crazy. I can't believe you haven't seen that. That's fine. That's my, that's my, I'm sorry. That was, I was light on, that had my in, uh, imagination. But imagine though, imagine for real though, like tomorrow we wake up and it's like the, the TV is covered with just like aliens are real. Even, even if, even if it's just Argentina and they're like, Argentina has said that they have evidence that aliens exist and that life on other planets is possible and that they've communicated with them and that other governments have communicated with them. That'd be Can nuts. Imagine? It would send the world into a into conspiracy, and every single person who's a MUFON employee jizzes their pants at the exact same time. I'm gonna be. I'm not okay with that. I'm gonna be that lady <laughs> on the top of the building in Independence Day who's like, yeah. Magic <laughs> 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 gets immediately vaporized. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be me. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you guys, what do you, you got, Alex? To... Okay. So, I don't know if you guys have heard about this. This is a crazy story. Uh, there is a man, uh, his name is Brent, uh, and he is fairly wealthy. Uh, he owns a hostel in Texas called HK Austin and that building he's, it, the quote is, I fell in love with the combination of hospitality and history and that, that his, his hostel was built in 1892. Uh, and by the way, this is by Matthew Wilson on insider.com just so that we're all on the same page. Uh, so that was his first thing. And he just kind of like got into this idea of like 
hospitality, historical site, doing his thing, right? And so naturally, in 2018, he decided to up his game when his friends challenged him to a larger project, which was the entire town of Cerro Gordo, California. Uh, and he's quoted. This, I think, this is what we talked about last week. Di- is it? Is it? I don't. Is this remember. the dude who ends up in the in the uh, snow? He's trapped in the snow. Yes. We did we talk about this last week? Yeah, I definitely I brought it up. Did you talk about yeah. a toxin crendor, maybe? I definitely did. You? I maybe. remember talking. This it was on our special Shit, show. Shit, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember yeah, it. We did. Okay. 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 So this isn't okay. Give me one second, then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it either. I'm just. It's been a long okay. week for me, though. I've got a story. If it, if you guys want to get us like, mind blown, oh, of course. It's not even a story, really. Shout out to uh, the gentleman Matt who tweeted at us today. Yes, I saw that tweet. Uh, David S. Anderson of DSA Archaeology posted a bunch of ancient alien theorists versus archaeologist tweets. Yeah, and all of them are incredible. But the most incredible one. Is the Stonehenge, uh, not some, uh, the the Easter Island guys? If you have if you have not seen those, oh my uh, god, gifts. I saw this. I saw this clip yeah. that you're talking about today. Yes, this is great. Incredible, incredible. It is, it is cool. It, and they were like, it's it, not even that like, bad. Aliens must have moved them, and then it just shows you how people could have done it. And what's insane about it is if you look at the way the rock man is moving, yeah. it almost looks like he's walking, which is crazy. it is. He does. He's got that kind of like it's waddle so walk crazy going. Looking. So I just want to give a shout out to uh, uh, the Matt, the guy who tweeted at us, because I love stuff like this. I love it's stuff I want to send to my dad, but my dad will never believe. It. My dad will still like, be like, "It looks like something from like an RPG, or or something like that, where you like oop, solve oop, a puzzle by oop. like moving like a statue around, and it just kind of like yes, yeah." The, if you've right. seen the if it, if you've seen this, it just literally dead ass looks like this guy's like walking down the street. It like is. If, you know what it also feels like? If you had no if you had no knowledge of what this was and you just saw this, you also could say these three groups of people are trying to hold this blindfold sto- stone golem down. Yeah. That's true. You could like, like he's trying, to, get trying away. to move away. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to walk away and they're holding like, him back. Yeah. He's like, oh, I have to keep walking. <laughs> it's so crazy looking. And uh, yeah, it just goes, you know, to show how ingenious people can be. Because this is no joke. How if you try, if you have to move something heavy, this is how you 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 swivel it. Yeah, you sw- like this is how people do it. They wobble it down. Like it makes perfect sense. You don't think about it until you see it like this. Genius, genius. Anyway, I just wanted to give a shout out. If you want to see those clips, uh, it's D S A Archaeology on Twitter. Yeah, it's actually a super dope clip. Simply because, like you said, it's got that historical aspect of this. Like, it explains it. It really does explain. Yeah, and he goes on to explain, you know, all sorts of, like, even the ancient Egyptian alien ships. Oh, the hieroglyphics of the of the spaceships and, like, the yeah, helicopters like, and stuff? Yeah, it's like, look at these symbols. Now look at this other stuff. Like, it's great. <laughs> I love it. That's what's great. That's why you got to do your research. For everybody out there who's like, stop telling, stop being funny and just tell me the truth. Or just make it fun. It's just like, no, we got to do the history search because it's important. That we come in with context. Yeah. My favorite is the comments. Uh, this one, even though it's in Spanish, I know exactly what he's referring to. This guy's talking about how on the History Channel, they're like, we don't know how ancient man did this. And then it literally just shows a guy, modern man, going into the desert, making a home in the desert. That looks like this beautiful home. And it's just like, yeah, no, we can do it. We're just lazy as hell. Yeah, We're like, we just had technology what? We have to at our fingertips. it? Yeah, we, we know how to make this stuff happen. We just we can't imagine it because it's a lot of work. Well, but like, even if oh. we do imagine it too, we don't want to believe it because we want the other more fantastical thing. Sure. A lot of us do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot me. of us stayed up praying to Satan that it would happen. God, I just want <laughs> Power Ranger, dude, imagine though. Imagine if I got to become the pa- a Power Ranger. I don't blame you at all. I don't no, blame you don't. at fucking all. I, I would have fucking... gotten one over on Satan. Because he would have had my soul, but I would have done good th- too many good things. If anything, I trust you more. Thank you. All right. So I have a, I have a replacement story. Since All right, let's do wanna, it. Yeah, since we don't want to do that one again. Uh, have you guys seen The Conjuring? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's one of the, I believe it's one of the Warren related. <gasps> That's their names, the Warrens. Yeah, I don't know there why it just like came to me easily <laughs> now. But. It's the uh, house in Harrisville, uh, 
that is that is uh, Rhode Island. Yeah. That, hey, that guess is, what? That's where I used to. That's where I grew up. In Harrisville. Mm hmm. Next to the Conjuring House. Mm hmm. Very close. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, this guy Corey Heinzen, uh, bought the house about a year ago, uh, like, and uh, he bought it like because the Conjuring movies got popular. Of course. Um, and uh, so it then worked. the the person who used to live there. Uh, Andrea Perron or Perrin wrote two books called House of Darkness and House of Light uh, that talk about things that have happened in that house over 300 years that it's been built. And uh, so he bought the house. And basically what's happening is ever since Friday and going now, I think for seven days till next Friday, they are oh, doing a live – simultaneous paranormal investigation inside of the house from the conjuring. Okay. Hell yeah. That's a great idea. So there are 500 people who paid to stay overnight there in the past year in real life. Uh, and, uh, some of them even like went home early, like, uh, like after staying there for a couple hours overnight. Um, uh, other people say they had things that were fascinating uh, but there's an interactive web event that's that's going right now. It started for free on Friday, but here's where it gets weird. Okay. It moved behind a paywall uh, after what? after Friday. One uh. day access costs five dollars, and a full week pass is twenty dollars. And no. you can monitor. There's two dozen cameras set up in the house. There's like twenty five cameras in the house. Uh, people like get in front of cameras for parts of the day and talk about things that they've found and report things that they've already captured. Uh, there's a clip that says that shows this guy saying before the big energy burst, there's a black mass on the ceiling in that room that moves over towards it. Uh, a softball was tossed from a radiator overnight. A spirit box uh, captured oh some voices. Of course it did. Something said, free one of us, help us. Don't hive. Don't hide. <laughs> don't hive either, though. Don't hive. Don't get hives. Uh, this guy, Bill Brock, who has been at the house for most of the year, Bill Brock. <laughs> said we may actually be living within a portal oh, or some God. kind, something that allows energy to flow from here to another place or from another place to here. He said he was a skeptic before he joined the team, and now that's changed. Uh, a library book was seen to have been removed from a bookshelf in the library room with no one around. Uh, the book that... And it it uh, flew off the shelf twice in September. Was Moral Relativity by David B. Wong? Uh, he said it definitely. The Bill Brock said that definitely seems like a sign. Maybe it has issues with morals. Maybe it was immoral. <laughs> Maybe we are being immoral. Good. Thank you for interpreting that, guy. Um. Apparently, a portion of the event proceeds will go to the Gary Sinise COVID nineteen relief fund. Did not know that existed. But apparently Lieutenant Dan's running a relief fund. And uh, you can go and you can check it out right now. And I guess it's going all week for $5 a day. I'm checking it out right now. It's the darkzone.tv. Oh, my God. Purchase tickets here. Don't don't purchase the tickets. <laughs> that is th – there's so many people. Wow. The darkzone.tv. 12 noon on Saturday, May 9th and running 24-7. So I guess it got off to a little bit of a late start. I guess it's genius to make a quick buck. I guess. <laughs> I, I would I just wish that I could like I wanna like watch it, but I don't want to pay them. <laughs> That's the most honest thing yeah. I've ever heard. It's yep. just like I yeah, I wanna watch it, I just don't want to have to pay for it. I wanna watch it like in the sense that I wanna see what's happening, but I don't want to take it I, I don't wanna like Com contribute to to this as if I was watching it for like my because I believe in the paranormal. You know what I mean? I want sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. I don't know, but there's a huge guest list. There's a lot of people there, and if you're interested in that sort of thing, it's Check happening it now. I mean, I, I'm always down for like the live hunts and stuff because that's always interesting. Uh, it's just usually time you're just kind of watching a wall and nothing. It also happens. lists entity voices as oh a uh, as a guest. As a guest, excellent, dude. Well, there you go, everybody. I hope you now are, are ready for your week and you can go watch some walls for five bucks.
I'm, I might do this. Entity voices. Join yeah. the house live. Live dot the dark zone. Alex, don't do this. Don't 20 fall for bucks. this. A whole week, dude. A week pass. Buy for I'd do a live watch with you if we could like restream it to Twitch. Oh, yeah. I would love that. to do that, too. Oh, my God. We'd go straight into jail. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we would be. They'd get rid of us. The ghosts so would show up in our houses. And... <laughs> 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 on that face that you could not see. Everybody, thank you so much for your support on Patreon. Or if you're listening to this as part of the compilation, oh my that's God. horrifying. Alex, I didn't I expect you to hold it that yeah. long. And it, like, I saw it, was like, huh, looked away, came back, and you were still doing it. I was like, whoa. For those that's who can't see, terrifying. he's just like, like hardcore. he's just pulling his lips apart and just burying his entire girl. You know what I'm saying? So. Stop it. Stop it. It's <laughs> You know what it looks like? It looks like in a horror movie, you're mm. about to pull your flesh off and be like, there's a skeleton in me. That's what <laughs> there it is. Looks like. There is. It's, it's terrifying. True. We all got a skeleton in us. And the sooner we can accept that, the better. That's why I do and these things. <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. And thank you for support on the Patreon. We love you. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Peace. Bye, everybody.